Welcome to Bean Chill Conversations. I'm your host, James Law Jr. That's right. I am James Law Jr. I'm the lead bat this evening. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm James Law Jr. You can follow me at James Law Jr. on everything in the universe. Spell it out. Spell it out. Spell yeah. it out. Jr. We are back at our regular time this week, and I brought somebody with me. So grab a drink and join us next. I'm James Law Jr. I'm one of your hosts. You can follow me at Black Hope LA, of course, and on our GH Report page. But I'm here with two people who are just eager to talk about what happened last week? Yeah. Go. <laughs> you should have told me. Told me. <laughs> you know you owe me. You owe me. You owe me. You yes. owe me. I love oh, that song. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, we're gonna see the background vocals. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah. Oh wait. Oh, that's me. See? That's I know. I was like, "What's that?" I was like, "I was like, oh, there's more music." And of course, my chocolate twin, James Law Jr. And my vanilla sister in the house. <laughs> I am James Law Jr. After Buzz TV at the Wayne Costa Heart Hardy's Family Union Two. Yes, we are here in Vancouver, and I'm with the wonderful, the funny, the life changing Pascal Hutton. Life changing. That feels like it puts a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> oh, James. Oh, James. Oh, tell James I, I miss him. Oh, oh yeah. lovely guy. Yeah, you can He's so sweet. Yeah, I love are, James. Are we rolling? <laughs> Hi, James. You're awesome. <laughs> James Lott Jr., for those who James don't know. James Jr., yes. Ladies and gentlemen, he plays a legacy character, Ridge Forrester Jr., hey. also known as RJ, Anthony Trapel. Hey, guys. How's it going? How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I love my job sometimes because I get to meet people that I've always admired and I've always liked and are part of my soundtrack of my life. And I'm trying to fan out too much. I'm trying to be professional. <laughs> the ladies of In Vogue, Rhoda, Sydney, and Terry. Hi, Hi. ladies. Hi. What a pleasure. Yeah. People do age, James. <laughs> you you don't, but you don't. But, right now. but people do age. She's here. I feel her too. No, I seriously, I feel her. I feel her too. Mm -hmm. She protects me so much, yeah. and uh, she she tries to make things as smooth as possible. Yeah, she's here. Yeah, I know. She kind of tapped me a second ago. She's like, okay, I'm like, okay. Yeah, she I'll like, and she, and she likes you. She would have she oh. would have loved you. Aww. Yeah. Hi, Titi. Hey, Titi. Hi. Welcome to the GH Reports, the General Hospital After Show here on After Buzz TV. Uh, we're glad you're here to join us. I probably went blank all of a sudden. Here to join us for another week of what happened in Port Charles. It really wasn't a week. It was like three days. So we're going to talk about that and cover all that, give you some news and gossip, our segments, the whole nine yards. Yes! Of course, my girl, I love yeah. Michelle. Yeah. I mean, how, I mean, how did, I mean, when I first heard, when I first heard, um, not nice tea, but when I first heard Turn Off the Lights, back when we were Wilcox Wrecking Crew, and I was like, this voice is amazing, like powerful, amazing, then I heard her speak. Yeah. Everybody brought me somebody. That's so funny. Yeah, my grandmother had a house on Rosecrans and Keene, so I used to always go there all the time. And I'm from Eaglewood. So, I mean, I, so I was, that whole South and South LA area, I was back and forth all the time. And I remember how there were parts of, parts of the schools I which I couldn't go to because of the gangs, certain colors I couldn't wear because of the gangs, certain shoelaces I couldn't wear. It really, people sometimes don't understand. It's like, it was really, in the 80s and in the early 90s, it was really bad. Like, it was really, really bad. And you guys were like policing the beat at that time. And so, I mean, when you went into police, did you did you imagine you would be in a situation where it was like that? Like, it was war, basically. I've always wanted to ask any of the, the Prince women, do you feel that he was a major, like, almost a feminist towards women? Or was it just he loved women? Now, because he has so many women he's worked with. I think he was years. so in touch with his feminine side, and but yet he was very masculine. I wanted an older brother like you. Also, his little brother, was always the one that reminded him about what his mother would say and what his yes. mother said. This is arguably one of the best interviews I've ever had. Oh my God. And uh, the other best interview I ever had was with Larry King. He's my idol. He's my, yeah. my idol. Yeah. You I'm know why? Good. Because you listen. Thank you, Ed, for being on the show. I love being here. It's like you're always, you're always a good time. You're, you're one of the most gracious hosts I know. Thank you. Oh, you, just, you just made my year. Oh my All God, right. he's literally a year. Thank you okay, very much. Man. Thank you so much. You're welcome.